So in a previous video, I talked about how you might uh, be able to align yourself with God and what is good, and that'll bring a number of benefits. Uh, for one thing, you'll be a lot happier, a lot more at peace with yourself. And at the minute, you know, when you, unless you've gone through this transformation, then you'll be plagued by all the, the bad things that you've done and the bad feelings that you have and perhaps a bit of guilt and perhaps a sense of inadequacy. Well, you know, on this journey, you can be relieved of all those feelings effectively. And it is this sense of freedom, freedom from from the oppressiveness of your own you know, psychology in a sense. So, but to do it, you have to uh, know what to aim for. If you're going to aim for the align yourself with the ultimate good, then then you need to have some idea of you know what's right and what's wrong, and and that's where the the teachings of the modern prophets can help clarify things that have become in recent times very confused. So I guess the ultimate ideal is to align yourself with the you know the attributes of God, which include things such as wisdom patience, humility, mercy, love, obviously, uh, earnest. So these are, you know, some of the attributes that you should be thinking about when you're, um, you know, looking at yourself. So wisdom is, is maybe a good starting point because, you know, Wisdom starts by knowing, you know, what is good and what is not good. That's the, that's the essence of wisdom. And until you know that, then you don't really know how to steer yourself. So, so wisdom is a good one to start with, in terms of knowing what to do. And maybe the first element of wisdom is to know what is the highest spiritual attribute you should be working on. And without a doubt, that is humility. So. You know, perhaps the penultimate evil is pride. Now, there are other evils which are you know, all bad in a sense, but, you know, pride is the one that's credited with having led, you know, to the initial fall in the Bible stories. So it's the one that's identified in those stories as, uh, you know, as the, the ultimate cause of evil. And the trouble with pride is, that a proud person, you know, won't receive wisdom necessarily. They'll only receive what what they want to receive. A humble person is perhaps more open to to accepting, particularly things that are against what they like. So, and this is one of the things you've got to shape what you like. And you may have to realise that some of the things that you like and love are not good things. And you know, the more you love them and like them, the less you're going to want to hear that message that these aren't good things. And an evil person will, will get quite angry if you confront them about this, um, about some of the things they like or support. And, and maybe, maybe you know, some of the conflict we get in our world today is people not being prepared to, to, to hear messages against, you know, their beliefs then. Now, it's a very challenging thing to do to undergo this transformation. Um, the analogy used in the, in the, in the law books is that you know, everyone has a set of beliefs, and it's <clears throat> and it's like it's like your house. You've organised your house the way you like it. You've got all the furniture just where you like it, and and now you've got to start shifting that around. And uh, it certainly says that you know, if you're talking to other people and, and you're confronting their beliefs, you can't just barge in and start moving the furniture around. They'll get very offended. So you you have to sort of gently suggest, look, maybe that would be better over there, or in other words, maybe you'd be better thinking this. Um, or believe in this rather than that. But if you're dealing with other people, you have to be very gentle. But when you're dealing with yourself, you can be brutally honest. So, but it's going to take a lot of work for you to shift, you know, your preferences in a sense. And so that inner work comes from, you know, uh, and an essential part of it is an inner reflection each day um, where you spend a bit of time and just sit and think about what have I done today that was maybe spiritually wrong. Now, we're not so much interested in whether you've made mistakes at work or things like that. I mean, that's 
leave the worldly things aside. They're the things that are going to hold you back. You're going to you're going to get plagued by your <clears throat> inadequacies, incompetencies, or the stresses of the day, or things you have to do. That's going to hold you back in relation to this particular task. This particular task is in relation to how you've dealt with other people, in relation to your moral choices. Each day, sit there and think about. Um, what it is you've done? Did you did you ignore someone when they were telling you something that perhaps was important to them? Did you act selfishly in some way? Did you act greedily? Um, did you you know uh, leer at anyone um, or indulge in sort of lustful thoughts? Um, did you um, maybe act proudly and not listen to someone? Were you being arrogant? All these things you need to first sit down and identify in yourself and, and, and note them. Um, and that's the first step. The first step is, you know, cataloging everything that's wrong with you. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, you'll find there's a lot of stuff there. That, and the more you go through this process and the more you dig, the more and more will come up. Now, C.S. Lewis noted that when he started his conversion, he... Um, he did this sort of introspection on himself and he said he found a, a zoo of um, sort of uh, lusts and prejudices and all sorts of uh, bad things with him himself and he sort of came up with a statement that I am legion. And legion being, you know, the host of devils that uh, that uh, possessed someone in Jesus' time and who were sent out of that person and then, you know, took possession of a... Um, herd of swine, um, which either could, could either didn't want to have them in them or couldn't resist their influence on them, and the herd of swine, you know, committed suicide by running off a cliff. So, but anyway, so inside yourself, you may find that there is this legion of little, um, you know, what spiritually would be looked at as, you know, evils within yourself that have become or are part of your personality. Now the fact you have these is not entirely your fault. This is, you know, these these come down hereditary lines. Some people might be more prone to alcoholism. Alcoholism. Some people might be more prone to to um, sexual desire. Some people might be more prone to pride, etc. So you're not necessarily, you know, entirely responsible for how you got these illnesses, as that's what they are in a sense, spiritual illnesses. Um, but you know, only you really can can get rid of them. Just like you know, if you're if you're unemployed, um, you know only you can really help yourself. Um, of course, you you need help from other people, and as for these illnesses, you'll need help from God. But you know, if you're unemployed, you've still got to get up and, and go and look for a job. You've got to you've got to show up for work. You've got to do something. And and in in this case, yeah, you've got to first identify what the problem is, and then you'll have to do some of the work. And the first part of the work you have to do is once you've identified these things, is to try and Stop doing them, and this requires maybe a fair bit of self-denial, and uh, and it's and you'll find it's it's not easy. And in, in fact, I think you get shown exactly the more you try and get rid of them, exactly how big a problem each of these things is for you. You'll get put in situations where it's revealed to you um, what these are, and it's revealed to you how much in control of your psyche and and your behaviour these things actually are. And you might feel at times a little bit, oh my goodness, you know. How, how come that has such power over me? How come I can't resist this urge, this gluttony or, or, or lust or arrogance or whatever? So you'll, you'll be helped on the journey. And the first part of the journey I think you get help with is you're showing your faults. Um, you, first, you first spot them and then they are more and more revealed to you and then you have to more and more try to self-deny yourself or get control of that. And you'll be given opportunities to do that. Your, your circumstances will lead you to where they're revealed and where you get a chance to work on them. And you may fail. You will. You probably will fail, almost certainly, I'd say. You will fail the first few times you try and stop a behaviour. Um, but if you persist with it, and I think part of this is for you coming, part of this is, again, it's shaping your heart, that you coming to detest that particular behaviour or, or, or attribute. And, and the more you experience it and the more you reflect on it, the more you'll say, oh, that's terrible. And I don't really want that to be part of me. I don't want to be an arrogant person. I don't want to be looking at people with lust. Uh, I don't want to be, you know, grabbing the last bun off the plate, you know, 
as quickly as I can before anyone else gets it. I don't want to be selfish like that. And the more you experience these sorts of things, you know, uh, the more you'll start to change your heart. And that's all I think you can do. I think all you can do is say, oh, I've learned to detest this. I've learned to realize that actually I, I can't control it. And then it will be removed. Um, but you first have to go through that trial. You have to really not want that attribute. And then it gets taken away. And that is a spiritual journey. That is the inner journey. So, so that that's a starting point. That self-inspection, that identification of what is wrong with you, and then that self-denial or attempt at self-denial um, to try and you know stop stop what you're doing, uh, and and of course much prayer, much asking for help. Um, there's a, there's that humility is is necessary. So the the opposite to pride is humility, and and in a sense pride can only be defeated by humility. Thus we have you know the example of Jesus on the cross. Um, humbling himself, you know, being executed as a criminal, looked down upon by everyone. Um, and it's the ultimate humility that stands in opposition to the, you know, ultimate pride of the, of the world and, uh, and, and the concepts associated with, you know, uh, Satan and um, all that is bad. So that's a starting point And, you know, we can talk more about where to go from here later on. All right. Thank you.